On January 8th of the year 2023, that picture is wrong, Bethel Church had a very, very special guest, Kenneth Copeland. You know, this guy. And Abraham became very rich. Very rich. I was very interested in very rich. And God has had us center up on heavenly economics. That's right. And how it works. And it works by certain laws of prosperity. That's it. He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. At exactly 12 noon (laughs) on the 29th day of March. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Come it's on, over. give God glory and praise and honor for this. It's, it's over. over. It's oh, over. it's over. So Copeland started talking at one hour and 12 minutes, and he kept going and going and going and telling lots of long, boring, drawn-out stories with references to things that happened way before most of the people in the room were even born. And he finally finished up at three hours and 43 minutes. That's about two and a half hours. Now, because Copeland talked for so long, there's no way I can address all of what was said in this particular video. But I do want to address a couple of key things. First of all, I want to address the issue of people who are surprised to see that Kenneth Copeland was a guest speaker, an honored guest speaker at Bethel. But they shouldn't be surprised at all. The theology of Bethel and the theology of the Word of Faith movement are very, very similar. Kenneth Copeland's Word of Faith doctrine and the theology being taught at Bethel are essentially the same thing, and these two are very close buddies. Here are some excerpts from a video I made in November of 2020. Johnson was the guest speaker at the Southwest Believers Convention a few months earlier. And this year, for the first time ever, we welcome Pastor Bill Johnson to the stage. Prepare your spirit for an encounter with God like you've never had before. Will you rise up and be the one? You'll notice that Todd White is also one of the featured guest speakers at this prosperity convention. Bill Johnson is a praise and worship specialist. Hallelujah, Lord. And he's good at his job. <laughs> and that's the reason the glory falls. I need to hear this man. Yes. Amen. I need to hear his specialty. Yes. Amen. A man that I so greatly and highly admire and trust in the ministry. And uh, well, would you welcome Bill Johnson to this platform, please? I love you, man. I love you. you. Glory to God. (laughs) This, yeah, come on. This is what I call a preacher's preacher. Come on, give the Reverend another, another welcome this morning. Not only do these two guys love each other, but they love money. Bill Johnson and his son and co-pastor Chris Valentin are making themselves very rich. This is another video that I just made recently. I will put a link to this in the description of the video, video you're watching now. And then I also want to mention this video, which I also made just a few months ago about how Kenneth Copeland and Chris Valentin are teaching the same things. And they were doing so at the Catch the Fire Church in Toronto, which is very closely associated with Bethel Church. Now let's take a quick listen to a few of the things that Chris Valentin said the evening that Kenneth Copeland was the guest speaker. Oh, and by the way, I have to alter the sound and the look of these videos from Bethel because otherwise they give you a copyright strike, even though a video like this falls well within the legal category of fair use. Bethel intentionally misuses copyright laws to shut down its critics because they think they're above criticism, I guess. I I heard this phrase, faith creates alternative realities. And I I just want to, I just have, um, and I I just want to, I just have, um, I think it's prophetic that Kenneth Copeland is here, not just because of who he is, but because of the season he's coming. I've been thinking about for the last month and a half that the righteous will live by faith. And here's one of the fathers of the faith movement. And I, I believe that, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, Good reports are coming on Monday. Good reports are coming on Monday. Good reports are coming on Monday. 
Thank you, Lord. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the good reports are coming on Monday. Brother Copeland, it's so good to have you here. <laughs> and we pass through this alternative reality and we realize that it's, that it's all an illusion. We're firm believers here at Bethel, not just at Bethel, but in the kingdom. Nothing happens till it's first a declaration. So, Notice he says that this is what we believe at Bethel. They believe the same thing as word of faith people believe, which is that we have the same abilities that God has, that we are just like God. We're little gods. We can speak things into existence because that's what God did. We have power in our words. This idea has more in common with paganism, with witchcraft, than it does with biblical Christianity. We're going to make a declaration together. Benefits, sales, and commissions. And she said, well, I certainly do need things. Lord, take my life and do something with it. Favorable settlements, estates, and inheritances. I'm going. Interests and income. He's got money coming into his place in wheelbarrow loads. Rebates and returns. And I said, and the Lord said, agree with him, agree with him. I said, yes, sir. Checks in the mail. Oh. oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, in his two and a half hours at Bethel, Kenneth Copeland also spent some time singing a couple of old favorites. Gifts and surprises. And don't you ever say I did. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. Finding money. The Lord's gonna get me that money. Debt's paid off. Expenses decrease. And I tell you what, I have just fallen in love with this man. Huh. I am so thankful that we have the opportunity to receive a real believer, a believing believer. And I laid my hands on that airplane and I blessed it. Man, Gaco, cool, and a shaman on the wings, bang, bang, got him out there on the ground, bro, bush, cool, and they say, click, I bless the hanger, I just woke. A, a, a man of genuine faith. And I believe that God is going to release over us. In fact, that was the word I got. The, uh, uh, the, a, 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 uh, uh, the, in 2012, that there would be a specific release over this house. I went back down, and he said, I got up, went over to the sanctuary, and got over there on my knees, and I said, Jesus, did you go to hell? He said, come right up on the inside of me. Come, come right, right up, right on, up the on the inside of me. me. You better believe it, big boy. If I hadn't, you would have. <laughs> <laughs> Word of faith teachers have historically held to this heretical idea that Jesus did not pay for our sins on the cross. He had to do so by suffering in hell. And this idea is... Not really biblical, although a mistranslation of the word hell, which actually should mean something more like Hades or the place of the dead. But whether you use the word hell or you're actually talking about something more like a place of the dead or just the grave, it doesn't matter. It's where did Jesus pay the penalty for our sins? And that has to be on the cross. Word of Faith teaching says that Jesus went to hell and had this big fight, this big battle with Satan where he eventually won back dominion. And that is a core teaching of Word of Faith theology. Here's something from the pretty mainstream website, gotquestions.org, and uh, I'll leave a link to that, and he kind of gives a nice summary of what's the correct way to view this from a simple biblical perspective. Lastly, I want to mention that this idea that Jesus didn't pay for our sins on the cross, but did so by suffering in hell, is not a charismatic idea. It's not a Pentecostal idea. It's not a Christian idea. But Bill Johnson is totally fine with Kenneth Copeland teaching false doctrine in his church. Look at that smile. And I just feel like the luckiest guy on the planet to be able to say, here's my friend, Kenneth Copeland, to come to minister to us tonight. I'd like for you to welcome him. COVID-19! COVID-19! Brother Copeland, Brother Copeland, it's so, it's good, so to good to have you here. And I tell you what, I have just fallen in love with this man. In 2012, a prophet friend of mine sent me a word. And he said in this word that the Lord was going to open up a connection, a thread of connection to Kenneth Copeland. And I was to pull the thread. And something would open up for us as a family. I love you. Thank you. I love you, sir. Thank you. 
Hey, but let's take a pause here for a moment, because some of you are maybe saying, hey, Kozar, what's the big deal? Why don't you uh, show some of the good clips? Why don't you show some of the good things that he said? There's got to be something good that you can show from that video. Why are you complaining about just the bad things? You know what? And that's a good point. I'm going to show you some clips here that aren't harmful at all. They're actually totally fine. And here they are. And um, now... But and uh, we got into this really money making deal. <clears throat> It was so the next day. Thum, 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 thum. <laughs> you remember nineteen sixty two, you know? Somebody was going. Oh. Now, in metal shop where I made that coffee table, and uh, it's uh, what's the name of that thing now, Dwayne? Uh, in Abilene. All right. Abram. Uh, glory to God. Okay, so that was the harmless part of the video. Got that out of the way. Now this next clip or this section of clips is actually one continuous thought, but he takes such long pauses that I removed them and it almost seems like they're completely disconnected, but they're not. This is actually what he said in the order of how he said it. And he's trying to say that we are just like God. The blessing of the Lord is the purpose for the cross. The first word ever to strike a human ear I was praying in the spirit quite some time and I had a vision of it. I saw God holding this lifeless gray body by the shoulders and they were exactly the same. They looked just alike, same size. Of course, I don't really know what's going on inside this man's head, but he can't use the Bible to say that we are exactly the same as God, so he has to claim that he had this vision. And in this vision, God is holding up a duplicate of himself. And then he breathes life into this gray God thing, which is a representation of us human beings. And he was speaking into his face. And he became... a living 
the Chumash says a living, speaking spirit like God. Like God. So he started that little section by saying that the blessing of the Lord is the purpose for the cross. And when he says the blessing of the Lord, what he means, we are to be blessed by the Lord. We're supposed to get stuff from God. And the cross is how we get stuff from God. And although these guys will sometimes make it a point that, yes, Jesus had to die because we're sinners who were guilty before God. He took our punishment. They don't mention it that much. And they usually change the meaning of the cross into somehow the cross is the thing that grants you the right to have health and prosperity and success. Normally, this kind of teaching is a little more subtle, but Kenneth Copeland is not subtle. He takes the bad theology of Bill Johnson and he sets it to, uh, <laughs> to number 11. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. Hey, man. And he heard the blessing. That's the first thing any human ear ever heard. Not any ugly. Couldn't do that because he looked just like himself. And he was looking for someone to fellowship with. Someone just like him. Amen. Now I want to play you a couple of clips from this video so that you can see that there are tremendous similarities between Bethel and Kenneth Copeland's Word of Faith teaching. This exact spiritual DNA of Jesus. You're not a little like him. You are exactly like him. Why is it when you look at Jesus, it's like you're looking in a mirror? Because you were born in his image. You were created in his image and likeness. Do you understand that? So Jesus, God was the painter. You're the painting. And Jesus was the model. When you look at Jesus, it's like looking in a mirror. He's your twin brother. You were born again of the Spirit. You were born of the Spirit. You were born exactly with the same spiritual DNA as Jesus. You were born with the DNA of God Almighty. You're not a little like Jesus. You are exactly like Jesus. You're not a little like Jesus. You are exactly like Jesus. So those video clips are from that Catch the Fire church, and they show that both Chris Valentin and Kenneth Copeland are very similar in their Little God's Doctrine. And of course, you can get a lot more detail about that topic and those videos if you watch my video. And again, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Now let's go back to Kenneth Copeland, who was just at Bethel a few days ago. It took a being whose words could be spiritual containers of faith. This is very classic word of faith doctrine right here. The idea that faith is a power, it's a force, it's like electricity. And our words are little containers of the, the faith power. This is completely false teaching. It's not biblical. Two things here. The Bible teaches us to have faith in God. Faith is not a substance. It's just a trust in God. We trust that God will do what he says he will do. We trust him for our needs. We trust him when we pray to him. Secondly, this false doctrine is closely connected to the little God's doctrine because they believe that God himself had faith, that we can have faith just like God has to have faith. So God does things by speaking things into existence using faith. Of course, he has a lot of faith, but this is just totally false and made up. People who believe this eventually wind up having a lot of the attributes of the mentally ill. You become disconnected from reality and you refuse to see what's right in front of you. And crazy stories like the one you're about to hear are told over and over and over again, and no one is actually skeptical at all. Everything these men say must be true. After a while, this is like mental illness. You just become the most gullible person on planet Earth. And he said, I had pain all that time. But he said, the last time I was here, suddenly the pain stopped. He said, that bullet finally worked its way around. And I spit it out of my mouth, and here it is. Okay, now I'm going to go through a section of this sermon where he's supposed to be sort of giving their testimony between himself and his wife, Gloria. He takes eight minutes, but really all we need is, I don't know, maybe a minute or less. So I'm going to be cutting out a lot of the little gaps in between. I'll just play you the most essential parts, and then uh, we'll go from there. Gloria and I moved out of our apartment, 
into a, 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 nice, a nice home there in Little Rock on a lease purchase deal. And so in the meantime, we rented a rollaway bed for $6. Somebody should really explain the term useless details to this man. And we had a little Panasonic black and white television that was portable, but you could also plug it in. And suddenly the picture just went down to about that size. And she was watching the Beverly Hillbillies about this tall. <laughs> He's going to explain that Gloria wanted to become a Christian so she could get a new television set. She got so tired of it. Now, I had made a, a, a coffee table in metal shop. Now, she puts that coffee table down, but it's pretty nice. <laughs> I worked hard on that coffee table. It had a glass cup, and then, and you know, my mother sent me Bibles all the time. So she just picked this Bible up, and right in the front of it, she said, Ken Precious, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. Now, Gloria was raised in the church of Christ. I was raised in Southern Baptist Church. And so we just didn't talk about it. Really wasn't going to against it one way or the other. Really wasn't going to against it one way or the other. And she said, well, I certainly do need things. And she said, well, I certainly do need things. Lord, take my life and do something with it. She had never heard the term born again until January after she was baptized in the spirit. And then she heard born again. I had, cause I was come from the Baptist, but I wasn't. I came in that night at about eight o'clock, new furnished apartment. Gloria and I both were scriptural illiterates. We didn't know anything about the Bible, nothing, zero. And I got, oh, and after that, I, I, I came in that night and Gloria was, she found a brand new furnished apartment. No one had ever lived in I came in after that trip, went in the bedroom, took my suit off, put a pair of khakis and, and just a light shirt. Walked in the kitchen, Gloria was preparing supper. She'd waited for me. And I sat down there, had one shoe on and I had my knee crossed there to put the other one on. Uh, I dropped that shoe and it just, uh, I, I, didn't, I don't know what was happening to me. And I, I just stopped and I heard it in here. Kenneth, son, no, Kenneth, if you don't get right with me, son, you're, going to, you're headed to a devil's hell. And I said, I know it, I know it. What do I do now? When I was a Southern Baptist Sunday school in the University Baptist Church in Abilene, Texas, my Sunday school teacher, and we'd already let the Sunday school superintendent know, you know, in the Southern Baptist Church, it's too much like school anyway. Just promote you all the time. So we told the Sunday school superintendent, if, if, if you promote us away from Mrs. Taggart, we're just not coming back. She's a widow woman, about that tall. Wore black all the time, a little black straw hat, a little artificial flower out there. <laughs> I said, Lord, what do I do now? I heard Mrs. Taggart's voice. I, don't, I never did know her first name. She called herself Old Lady Taggart. <laughs> well, we did too. I heard her, boys, you have to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And I thought, that sounds just as dumb as it did the first time I heard it, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and I just said, Jesus, come into my heart. <sighs> I became a new creature at that moment. I didn't know there's any such thing as a new creature. For a few seconds, I couldn't close my mouth. You can't close your mouth for two and a half hours. All the profanity was gone forever. That old nature left that night. And I thought, how am I going to tell Gloria? Uh, I said, Glo um, uh, come here, baby. So she got her, you know, and walked over there and she walked over here beside me, standing right here. And I said, um, uh, uh, what would you think, if, you know, if I uh, <coughs> uh, were to, uh, you know, uh, give my testimony or, or, you know, speak for God. To give my testimony or, or, you know, speak for God. She said, hallelujah. I said, what? <laughs> hallelujah. What are you doing? What, what? Then she told me, she was trying to figure out a way to tell me what happened to her. And I grabbed her and she grabbed me January, 1963. I know some people will be really upset with me asking the question, but did that sound like a true story of true Christian conversion? Now let's listen to him near the end of this time 
he starts talking about his health and about exercise and eating right and stuff like that. And he now has gone into the topic of how God told him he's going to live to be 120 years old. The Lord started talking to me about 120 years. Well, and I agree. And I don't have time to die. Well, if you're a little God and you have this super faith power, it kind of makes sense that you would say such arrogant and presumptuous things. Let's look at another clip. Bill, we, that area where the fence would go back and their home, Bob DeWeese's home, he was my captain on that airplane. It was a converted Navy medium bomber, 4,000 horsepower. Pratt and Whitney R2800s, 2,000 on side. I'd never been up close to anything like it, much less had anything to do with it. It was a powerful airplane. Anyway, we walked into his den. He said, Kenneth, take your shoes off and sit right there. Well, he just took his shoes off and sat down on the floor. He said, Gloria, take your shoes off and sit down right there. So she did. He said, Evelyn, take your shoes off and sit down here. She said, Oral, I'm not taking my shoes off and I'm not going to sit on the floor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he turned around there and looked at me and he said, Teach me faith. Oh, wow. Wow. I said, you've got to be kidding me. I learned it from you. <laughs> wow. I told him, I said, you use faith like a mechanic uses a wrench. You do it on purpose. No, he said, you boys have learned things about faith I don't know. And it was the saying part. He said, you're looking at the hungriest man for God on this planet. Sit down there and teach me faith. This is the best sort of humble brag. He's talking about Oral Roberts, who was the founder of the prosperity word of faith movement in many ways. And yet, Kenneth Copeland was seen as the teacher to the guy who was his mentor. Wow. So I get around you. That's all I want to do is teach you faith. <laughs> Praise God. So remember, in Word of Faith theology, you have this superpower. You, because of what Jesus did on the cross, you now have prosperity, you have health, you can declare things and they have to happen. You have power over sickness. Listen to the really clever choice of words that he chooses when he describes getting his own pacemaker. He said, take the pacemaker by faith. So I did. Do you remember just a moment ago he said that even the great and mighty Oral Roberts wanted to learn about the speaking part of faith that Kenneth Copeland was now familiar with. But now he says that God told him he should take his pacemaker by faith. This is a man who's just twisting the meanings of words and sentences. Here's what Bill Johnson says about people making excuses for their illness, people like Kenneth Copeland. We must stop creating theological reason for a disease to exist. We, we can't say, well, it's, it's, uh, I'm just getting older and this, this is just what happens. Uh, my parent, my father had it, my grandfather had it. Sure enough, I'm going to have it. No, stop it. Stop it! Stop creating. Stop adjusting your understanding of how the kingdom of God works and shaping the kingdom according to the, the laws of, of nature. It's, it's not that way. It's the other way around. And, and, and we, when we think that way, we actually make room for certain things to flourish that were never intended to flourish. We must stop creating theological reasons for disease to exist. I want to end this video with a section of a video I made, this one here, from April of last year. These people think they're supposed to reign in life. Here's Bill Johnson making that point very clear at the Kenneth Copeland Believers Convention in the summer of 2020. I'm so thankful to Kenneth Copeland and this whole team to give me a chance to be with you. It's a real honor, so thanks. Glad you showed up. Glad you showed up. So I believe the Lord is raising up people that know how to, what the Bible calls, reign in life. I'm sure that would be a familiar term in, in this tribe. It's fun, fun to be in this tribe today. Word of Faith theology is supposedly centered on faith. And one of the most important chapters in the entire Bible on the topic of faith 
is in Hebrews, and it ends with this. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and chains and imprisonment. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, men of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. That's from the book of Hebrews 11, verses 35 to verse 40. People of faith are not brave conquerors who always succeed and get over every illness. It's actually the opposite. Most of the time, God shapes us and makes us better people through adversity, not by answering every prayer and giving us everything we want. You feel that just lifting. It's lifting.